talk about the private sector if we're talking about outright criminality. This is the thing that people miss. It's like, why are we so obsessed with governments? That important institutions, both private and public, are attempting to sway the discussion. Trying to get somebody to think a certain way. The, the, this is another way that this, this kind of misinformation and conspiracy theory stuff tends to spread. What I mean by that is they did not want users to think that Facebook is deciding what you read and what you don't read. Which is propagated by cyber criminal groups, by the multi-billion dollar to take it seriously, to, to trust it, to take it at face value. In lockstep with a new approach to monitoring, regulation, sort of universal standardization. Which is transforming the nature of how certain criminal markets function and trust each other in terms of coordination, intelligence sharing, and particularly data sharing. And I'm just wondering of how these, these rumors and speculation and conspiracy theories can bubble up from kind of the bowels of the internet. It measures things like how much you care about the opinions of others versus your own judgment. If we can exercise that kind of interconnection between those different communities, we have a lot of power. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of power. It's a complete faith in the legal system. So the system might start to know better than the teacher. Somebody you presumably trust and like. The system can match every face with an ID card and trace all your movements. Based on computer algorithms as opposed to human intuition. Otherwise you'd just be sort of shut out of their whole ecosystem. And so the lesson should have been heeded by now. And more and more of our thoughts during the day come from the things that we have been thinking about and seeing from the screen. So fake news is crowding out real news over people's daily thoughts and beliefs. So it's difficult to ban the darkness. I certainly wouldn't be in favor of that. You know, we go from using a product to being jacked into the matrix, except the matrix is this sort of soft, invisible matrix that's kind of created by a few different companies, Apple, Google, and Facebook. Because that translates into, into money. This is an old story. This is a new. I mean, two billion people use Facebook every day. That's more than the number of followers of Christianity. And you get from that the rise of new politicians who readjust to reflect what reality is. And not only that, speaking of manipulation, you are now uh, so beholden to that new source. You live by your smartphone. So that when required, we can surveil people, even on the supposedly encrypted systems. A massive exploitation of a fraud. So it's a totalizing kind of environment. They're perilous because... A smartphone is a device that it, it uh, manages unique, uh, strong passwords for you across all your sites. It's an automated tool that will help human analysts sort through all that data so they don't miss anything. And so that's now available somewhere on the server. That already crunches data for the agency. So it's about targeted, proportionate response to protect our, our national security as well. The outlines of what we now know as all of the domestic spying. It's the same two people planning the same terrorist attack. And what it requires is they, they set up a secret court. We can roll this out to any other country. So let's think together as a team about what this all means and where we can and should go from here. For purposes of national security, which set in place a legal structure for surveillance. Agency officials held another meeting with tech companies. They've got a job to do, of course, as well. And a lot of them can even synchronize across multiple different devices for you. That we call the technological design, but I understand that. They can track those a lot better than we're tracking medical devices implanted in people. The first of these will be a little ingestible sensor. If you could really use the ultimate smart machine as a therapy. Of course, this can be applied much more widely. But until you test them in humans, then you can't tell, you know, if they work or not. Immigration officials say these concerns are overblown. They insist they are months, if not years, from actually building an algorithm like this. Our next big step is to demonstrate this in humans. Because she realized that technology and education had combined to create a lot of potential knowledge workers. Finding a ransomware with a worm-like function, which is explained why it's spreading around the world. There, information operations, which uh, essentially it's referring to a state sort of program. Well, the back door, the wonderful partnerships we have with many private sector uh, companies, governments and uh, groups, various organizations, you know, US sister agencies, and many federal agencies, including the FBI's that are in this business, for illicit commercial gain. The government already collects lots of information about people. The way that most global banks have, have begun to do this in many respects. 24-7 surveillance electronically of everybody all the time. In June, they introduced a machine learning software that basically detects quote-unquote objectionable material and then reports it. Being used to dampen or weaken the memories. When most people think of memory, they think of like a hard drive in our brain that just records things. Using a uh, 
3D printer, we printed that same So, what if we could start off by going into the brain and just finding a single memory to begin with? Could we jumpstart that memory back to life? Maybe even play with the contents of that memory? It depends on the highest possible technological advances. Oh. Big technological developments. And more of the stuff that is increasingly being used to gauge who should be doing what in the workplace. Into their system. To get to the bottom of Two men who given 85 strokes of cane in public for having gay sex. You, you have to think about that. I mean, that, that's slightly alarming in its own way. Not least because, you know, but there are, you know, whatever kind of torch you've got, there are places you can't shine it. And you just talked about the dark web. I'd like to talk about that some more. A monolithic AI that basically says by controlling this basic infrastructure it will be kind of the gatekeeper through which all other companies have to go if they want to sell goods they'll send you a code you've got to verify through your cell phone something beyond just the putting in your password and being done they can, if they can make it so that all of your friends are just the people who are in the cult you can't leave because it protects the, the identity of both the buyer and the selling legends than ourselves machines ultimately able to for themselves to select the people who you want to rise within an organization. Others who would object to content online and call it extremist, call it hate speech, whatever. This is a top line executive responsibility put in place. In, at the embryo stage, kind of subjecting the embryo to genetic surgery. Few of the people who are open to persuasion. And that was almost entirely fueled by what we now know to be fake news. Let's think together as a team about what this all means. Your news source might not be telling you the truth.